How's it going everyone? Matt Layton, Sean Battle. Welcome back to another real estate video. This video is going to be the top 10 cities in the United States to buy real estate. These are the cities where buyers are getting the best deals and it's the hottest buyer market. Usually we're seeing a lot of sellers markets going on these days. These top 10 cities are top 10 buyer cities. Sean Battle, how you doing? Good, my friend. Um, you know, the market locally, I, I don't know, man. I've started seeing a lot of inventory pop on this this week. Um, I've been waiting to show properties. I have buyers out there that have just been sitting and waiting for certain properties to come on. And namely, two bedroom, two bath condos along the orange line. And there has been nothing. And you know what happened this week? Couple just popped on today. I'm showing seven. Seven. Seven on Saturday. All between the 600 to 900, 600, 800 mark. So I'm excited. Finally, yeah. I get to show multiple properties on a day where they have options. You go to the Phoenix? You go to the Odyssey? I'm going to go to the Odyssey. We're going to go to the Monroe. Uh, to the Continental. Everyone's selling at the Monroe. And I mean, now it's like the time yeah. to sell. I mean, well, you know what? The Monroe struggled for a long time to get the prices. Yeah. And now they're getting them. I mean, they're big, nice units. Yeah. But kind of flew under the radar a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited. I think I think the inventory is, is starting to come, which should change the market a little bit and let the buyers breathe a little bit, get in. Right. Hopefully weed out those nine buyers that wrote on the last one. Yeah, so, really. So, yeah. And I was out in Sterling because I'm uh, Mr. Worldwide when it comes to Northern Virginia. I was out uh, there today too. Were you? Yeah. Um, was I was showing some homes in Sterling and all these homes had been on the market for over 30 days. They had done um, a few price reductions. I was telling my buyer, listen, they came down $5,000 yesterday, but I think there's still some wiggle room because that's yeah. just the market that, that we're in out there. And when I was driving home, something funny happened. It was, I was very proud of myself. It was, you know, eight o'clock, pitch dark out, and a car in front of me had all their lights off. Everyone had their lights on except for this one car. So what do I do? I, I get behind them like a, a safe distance away. I just start flashing them. You ever do this? Yeah, you ever yeah, try to like, day, yeah. like this car is literally invisible. It's extremely unsafe to be on the roads. I'm just, just flashing them. And they did not understand. They they moved over and I was like, all right, I'm over this. I don't have time for it. And so I drove around them. They probably thought I was going to murder them, yeah, right? Yeah. Totally. Car, car behind you starts flash. So I drove around them. I was probably, I'd say 200 yards in front of them. And I just turn off all my lights. <laughs> so if you're driving, you just see some idiot go from extremely bright to dark. And then the cops pulled you over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I turn all my lights on and like 20 seconds later, the guy, I saw him, he finally turned his lights on. I, I was dead. I was, ye I was yelling life. in my car. Like, I was happy that I showed houses in Sterling, but I was equally as happy that I got this Maryland driver to turn on their, the little victories, their headlights. Matt. The little victories. That's All great. right, so top real estate market for home buyers, top 10 cities. I'm going to rattle off a few, and then we can just stop and share yeah. our thoughts. I know nothing about this, so you're, this is his article. You're Jon Snow on yeah, this? Yeah, Jon's, yep. Yeah. Huh? You, you hate you hate Game of Thrones. Yeah, I've never watched it. By the way, <laughs> you didn't get the Waste reference. Of time. Um, all right, you, you don't want to piss off the uh, the viewers. All right, best buyers uh, yeah. markets. T we're gonna start from ten. Tampa, Florida, Nashville. Really? Yeah. Tampa is my spot. That's man. your spot. Yeah. yeah. Hey, buy Maybe some real estate in Tampa. Real estate in Tampa. Yeah. Tampa, Florida, Nashville, Dallas, Providence, Rhode Island. And LA, and I'm gonna stop. Okay, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna stop there. I, I gotta like, and we can kind mind. of so that the, the top 10, these are 10 to 5 Tampa, Nashville, Dallas, Providence, Rhode Island, and LA. And I want to kind of give you an idea of what type of metrics they were going on, but basically, think of it as more inventory and lower sales price. I know I just said LA, so obviously it's not going to be across the board, but some of these other cities are maybe like, I would say like B or C type cities, nothing against Providence, Rhode Island, right. but when you, when you think expensive real estate, yeah, I, think, think. I think Taylor Swift like 
owned a house there or used yeah, to and like I don't know much about it to be honest. like spent like 10 million dollars there so I know in Providence there are high end but for the most part it's you know going to be more affordable than San Francisco um, but uh, let's see Florida jumped out at me because of the taxes because you know a lot of people are living in California and California is gorgeous I'm planning a trip to San Diego soon uh, but the taxes are almost unbearable right so if you run your own business or if you are in real estate or if you work can work from anywhere you know you can live in California and have the palm trees and the sand or you can live in Florida and have the palm trees and the sand and a, mm. a couple tens of thousands of dollars more right. depending on what your income level is so um, it you know we hear about studies of where people are migrating to and migrating away from. Mm -hmm. I think more people are migrating towards Florida and maybe away from those cities uh, and states like New Jersey and California that have the, spoiler alert, Newark, New Jersey. New, you can Newark's always buy stuff there. <laughs> not, it's not on the not top, on the top not 10. on the top 10. That's amazing. Uh, probably because no one wants to buy in Newark. No, I don't yeah. know. Well, I, what I th think is for Florida, I've always looked at Florida just because, you know, I hate winters. Yeah. I hate the dark. I hate the cold. Um, and it seems like the summers here go by like that and the winters just go on and on and on. So yeah. you always look for that summer or that winter spot that you could buy in Florida. And I think, you know, that's a lot of the majority of the people. But if you think about who has bought there in the last couple of years, and it's all the baby boomers, right? There were so many more baby boomers than my generation. So you have to think that that market is gonna, going to start turning at some point right. where all these baby boomer, boomers are going to start, you know, dying or whatever, moving on. And moving on and to their next life. On to their next life. And there's going to be a lot of real estate to purchase. And I don't think there's going to be as much or, you know, as many buyers as there was. So that should drop the prices and make it easier. And maybe that's kind of what's happening. But the great thing about Tampa, um, you know, you've got the bay, you've got the ocean really close, um, and I've always looked at them because they were more a little more affordable than right. some of the other cities. And it's you know, it's on the bay side, so it doesn't get as much wind. It's really like and really really, really hot price is one of the things that they listed. This is a Realtor.com article. I'll list it if you're uh, watching on YouTube. Uh, the median price is around uh, two ninety five. To give you an idea, the national average is 310, and you know the <clears throat> Arlington average is uh, what is is it either, it's either 550 or 650. Be, yeah, somewhere around 650. It doesn't really matter what it is because I read an article and it was like the Arlington real estate market has gone down because the sales price has gone down. It's like no, twice as many condos sold last year that are like one bedrooms for like 500,000 right. compared to the single family That's houses. Exactly. Inventory. So these cities. Um, Think more inventory. So inventory of homes grew around 14 to 15 percent in these cities that we listed, compared to four percent uh, nationally. And uh, an also a uh, characteristic also listed is the year-over-year -year sales price. The growth only grew 1.4 percent um, compared with 8 percent the previous year. So these aren't necessarily cities to buy in 2020 and sell in 2021 but it might be an early sign of where a lot of millennials and maybe baby boomers are targeting their next move. Yeah, and you know, you target it now, you hold on to it for, for a while or get that, get that winter place now while prices are good, right? Because we all see it, we see it rebound yeah. all the time. It'll drop, you know, and that's when usually people don't have the money to buy, but that's when you jump in, get the place, secure it, and then those prices come back up. So, I mean, every real estate market has its turn um, right now, this is Tampa, Dallas, whatever, Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, Providence. Yeah. So, all right, so those were the top 10 of the 10 through 5. Just to recap, uh, Tampa, Nashville, Dallas, Providence, Los Angeles surprised me, but I think there's a lot of inventory out yeah. there. All right, these are the top five Riverside, California, Jacksonville, Florida, another Florida one. San Antonio, Texas. I heard the river walk there is I've you know, never been. Is cool. Yeah. Uh, never been to the Alamo. Mm. Uh, and then the number two, we're not going to get to number one yet, but number two is Chicago. Really? Chicago 
is an awesome city. Yeah. You've been, been to there. Chicago. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's if you're going to be in it's the Midwest. It's too, right on the, yeah. on the lake. I mean, yeah. Chicago, I, w I went in 2016 and I was surprised. I, for some reason, thought I wouldn't enjoy it as much as I did. Mm -hmm. Chicago blew me away. Yeah. Could I live too. there? Man. Winters. Woo. Winters. No, they, they, the Chicago's winters. got two seasons, right? They got winter and 4th of July. Yeah. It's, uh, it's I could hard. do 4th of July. That's about it, man. There's there's no way. Yeah. In the wind. Yeah. Yeah, forget it. But prices there are mm -hmm. just all over the board. You, so the entry price, you know, it's it's not like D.C. or Arlington where your entry price is, you know, three dollars $400,000. You can get something a lot cheaper in Chicago now. I don't, don't want to get into the safety aspect yeah. of it, but um, you could always go further out um, and, and maybe go up into Evanston or... Um, go out west a little bit and commute in. So that's uh, surprised me that it was a buyer's market, but maybe it comes down to inventory because it's a massive yeah, city. And, I mean, it's a massive city. So I'm sure certain areas are always going to be hotter than others, right? It's just like our Arlington compared to, you know, yeah. out in Loudoun County. I yeah. mean, there's certain spots that are always going to be hotter. So if you, if you take it as a whole, just like LA, right? I mean, you take these big cities as a, as a whole, maybe it's dropping because the outer perimeters are, are, are failing. Right. right. Where the inner city or that, that those hotspots are always gonna do well. So. And that's exactly right, because a lot of this study has to do with inventory and buyers getting leverage to be a, being able to negotiate. And simply put it, when there's more options available, there's gonna be more leverage for the buyer. Because when we're working with buyers and we're in a multiple offer situation, we're not negotiating with the seller. We're negotiating with the seven other buyers that are also trying to put a bid on the property. So we can run comps all day long and talk about the actual value of the house. But when the next buyer is willing to spend 10,000 more, the, the comparables and the value doesn't really matter. It's what do you feel like it's worth in, in the value in your own head? That's right. And you know, people are asking me, we've had a couple settlements lately where the prices have just exploded and I've had people call me about, did you really get this price yeah. or how did you get this price? Um, and at that point, it just, the comps don't matter. The old comps don't matter anymore. This, this has set a new, new section of what we've got to look at. And so there's a new one coming on in the Charleston right. in a week and I've got a, I'm showing that tomorrow morning. And so it's going to be priced up to where, where we just sold it. But, you know, you've got to be careful too because most of those buyers were set below. They were competing at a lower price point and then there's the two that just pushed that up. So yeah. there were two buyers before. Right. Now there might be one. Are they, but Are they that, willing to go that right. high? Right. So so it's it's starting to, to show its cards now where we've seen these price bumps and all these people that were willing to spend 435 are they willing to go to 470 yeah. That's that's the big question. Is your buyer willing to go to 470? Oh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. The number one city where buyer friendly, if you're looking to buy real estate, this is where apparently, according to realtor.com, is the most buyer friendly. Sean, do you want to take a guess? I'll give oh. you I'll give you a hint. Okay. No, no, it's, go ahead. Give me it's a hint. not it's not Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. I wasn't going to get it. Definitely going to get All right. <laughs> it is the capital of New York. Albany? Albany. Dang, ding, I knew ding, it. Ding, man. I knew Sign it. this guy up for Jeopardy. Albany, New York. That's a hard state capital to name. Because yeah. you instantly think New York City, then you're like, well, no, because all the state's capitals are in the middle of the state. Yeah. Then you're thinking, oh, Syracuse probably, and then... It's Albany. Luckily, so, I have relatives up there, so I kind of like had it. Luckily, there yeah. Somewhere. I pulled it out. There you go. Yeah. I didn't. I quizzed you. You nailed it. Yeah, thanks, man. So Albany is the number one. Apparently, it's um, very you know middle class, homey. I've driven through there. I think my brother had a basketball tournament there when I was about this tall. Uh, but basically, what it comes down to is um, inventory. Buyers have options. Um, lower entry sales price and uh, cool things to do like rustic charm and breweries and walking items and museums and just millennial galore. There's probably like a mural with wings that you can pose in front of, you know, just, yeah. just a nice wholesome city. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them out there that get overlooked a lot. Um, you know, a lot of these people, when they think about moving, they think about the big cities, but there's so much charm in these smaller cities that get overlooked. Yeah. So start looking at these smaller places. Look, think about yeah. retirement. Think about whatever phase of life you're in. Um, 
you know, if there's jobs there and the availability to purchase is there, so yeah. go for it, you know? I think my uh, my cousins in Syracuse just bought their second house. They bought one and then sold it and moved to this one. And I'm thinking, I, I'm thinking in the Arlington mindset, oh my gosh, you know, $600,000 and you probably bought like 800000 Well, you know, they sold their house for one thirty and bought, you know, the next one for one eighty. New construction, like gorgeous house, it's backyard, like really nice. So um, if you're looking for a, an investment property to rent out, maybe this would be a good opportunity for you to do some scouting because obviously maybe your first investment property wants to be within a 30 minute drive, but if you're willing to take on more risk and you see the opportunity in Albany or... Well, that's the thing. That's another thing to think about when you're purchasing. You know, there's, there's one thing about seeing uh, a city's rise, right? Yeah. Seeing uh, price increases and, and that's a good investment. But, you know, that's really hard to predict and really hard to know when that's going to hit. But think about it on a, on a cash flow standpoint. You know, if you buy a property, an investment property in Arlington, you're probably not going to be cash flow positive right. on a rental standpoint. But if you went to these smaller cities like Albany or think, start buying these rental properties to make income every year, every month, these are the spots to do it. You know, these smaller cities, they don't, you don't have to see a ton of increase, but you can see a monthly in, you know, increase in your income that, you know, for the long run and for retirement and everything else is really smart to do. Yeah. So start thinking about that. Don't think about the big cities. Don't think about necessarily your city. Think about where the good opportunities are to purchase. Right. right? Avoid the cranes. Avoid the new construction. You want stability, and that's what some of these cities have. That's right. Cool. So there you have it, the top 10 real estate markets for home buyers. I'm going to Tampa, don't follow me. In the United States. I, I'm surprised you haven't brought up fishing when you mentioned Tampa Bay. Yeah, that's part of the reason. That's part yeah. of the reason. I've been on Tampa Bay, it's, it's good fishing. Nice. So for Sean and for myself, thank you so much for, for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.